Okay, thanks for coming here. Uh, really, it, um, it's a positive weekend for uh, UTEP. Great fans, uh, great tailgating, great fun atmosphere. We had a dozen recruits in for the game, 14 parents in for the game. It was a really uh, uh, successful <clears throat> in just about every aspect. Practice real hard during the week, and we played real hard during the game. We played real physical. Very first play to the very last play, we uh, we, we brought on offense. We've been for a couple of games. We've really been so balanced on offense. 254 yards rushing with nine different runners, and 246 passing with 10 different receivers. So we're really spreading the wealth on offense. The two areas that we wanted to improve in was short yardage and goal line red zone. Horn zone, short yards, of course, we were two for two in fourth, fourth down, and that was excellent. <clears throat> and in red zone, we weren't bad either. We were five for five in the red zone. And uh, I, would, I thought our offensive receivers and our quarterback passing package down there in the goal line was excellent. And we've been working on it, passing on like we thought it was going to go until this week. And, and we thought that their two corners were as good as uh, any corners that, that we will, will face, you know, for a while. So they, our receivers were challenged. Uh, Vitito threw the ball well. We caught the ball well. We only had two drops. Uh, we're doing a good job with all of our running backs. Jason Williams came in, and, and you know, he's a fifth-year senior and had, had a good run. Leland Myers in the fourth quarter made some good runs see why we recruited him and thought he was going to be a good player. So it was a very successful game. Defense, it was great to see 10 under points on the scoreboard underneath the opponents. For the second time this year, zero points scored in the second half. Um, obviously, had to improve our defense, uh, rushing defense. We did. They had 30 yards rushing at halftime. It was a close game at halftime. The coaches made some great adjustments, and our our defense came out and had three and out. Our offense went and scored three and out. Our offense went and scored three and out. So we really won the game in the third quarter. I think that's when we we broke their back and broke, broke their will. <clears throat> and in the fourth quarter, we pretty much tried to clear the bench and, and have everybody get a chance to play, and that's going to help our a mental attitude for our whole team when everyone gets in mean, all four quarterbacks play, they had fun, it was exciting, they got to go out in, in, a, in a great stadium and, and a great night for football. We had 12 missed tackles, we only gave up two plays over 20 yards, one, one pass for 24 and one run for 26. And uh, like I said before, we played really, really hard. Special teams, our coverage, we cover hard, we cover fast. We got guys that can run and hit on special teams. Our coverage has been very, very good. Except for the one punt that we sky punted. Uh, the returner actually went like this, which means get away from the ball, and that's a signal, and then he cannot advance it, but the, the officials just didn't see it. And uh, he advanced it, but he did get the crowd on his feet, and, that, and, the, and the punter ended up making the tackle. We overran, we overran the uh, coverage and we had two guys going down. As soon as he signals like that, they bear off and um, didn't tackle him. And then he, the ball bounced up and he picked it up and run. The dish was just missing. That was all. We did, we knocked the guy, we knocked the ball out on the kickoff cover. We played penalty free uh, in the second half and we played penalty free in special teams. Had three holding calls in a row, which was, some, was, which was unusual.
So um, you want to throw off your back, you want to throw off your front foot, not your back foot. And um, he, had, he had a cast on his back foot for uh, you know, half, over half of one season, and then he broke his collarbone for the other half. So we didn't want him to run. And uh, against Houston, he broke a run and kind of slowed up and eased out of bounds. <coughs> We got a lot of ribbon from the team on that. <laughs> so he wasn't going to do that again. <laughs> so he did an excellent job of scrambling and running with the football. Really showed good speed. He's helping now. And uh, that's, that's good for us. I think Donald is looking, Donald Buckram is looking more and more like uh, he's going to have a chance to play. He was in his best. Be right before the New Mexico State game, right out and on the field and warming up. He looked fantastic um, and probably could have played. The only problem with playing Buckram last Saturday night was he just hadn't had a lot of tries in practice where he's running uh, with the offense, feeling where the hole is, getting bumped around, picking up protections, and stuff like that. So he wouldn't have, I want, I want him to practice more, run the plays more in practice before he plays it. Jermar Reed did a great job. We were so much better on the defense being physical with our defensive line penetrating and our linebackers uh, scraping off forward and not sideways like we did against Houston uh, right from the very beginning. Uh, Jermaine, uh, Isaiah Taafa actually, took the very first play, took their right guard stuffed him right back in the backfield, four yards deep. Back swerved out to the, to the, to the right, and uh, Jamie Irving just slid right and scraped right off and just decked the guy. And that was kind of indicative of the way the whole game went. We played really well, and I don't think they played as well as they're capable of playing. They're going to win some games. It's a great changeup with JT at quarterback. Um, we don't call it Wildcat, we just put JT in there. Yeah. <laughs> But it's effective, and he looked great, and I was happy for him because he didn't have a super game um, until he got in at quarterback. But that can be a real, uh, a real change-up offensive threat for us, especially with Buckram in there at, at, at the running back too. Now you got two guys really flying around, hard to hard to defend that. Although a couple of plays, Trevor ran.
close and, uh, and if, you're, if you're shoving two quarterbacks in and out of the game, that's hard to get any continuity. And they're shoving two tailbacks too, so uh, they're working hard to get continuity, but uh, they play hard. Uh, and uh, two backs, two quarterbacks, uh, uh, and they, a real good offensive line that was coached well too, but they're fit at the offensive line. And they had a kid towards the navel, so it would be, it'd be real different. Uh, it's, it's uh, to say the least, it's weird. You know, yeah, that's what Eric texts me Sunday night and said, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's, they're running an offense that is familiar to us. This is Larry Porter's team, there's no question about that. And he's the head coach, and, and Eric is uh, really happy there. And, enthused to work there and thinks the future is very, very bright for Memphis and, uh, and I hope they win all the rest of their games. That's fine with me, you know, except this one, so it's going to be competitive. Don't ask Joyce, my wife, who she's going to be cheering for because, you know, I'm, I'm not even second, you know, I'm about third on that list of, uh, of uh, so she's definitely wants both of her boys. Definitely, I think they made improvements. You know, they opened with Mississippi State and, uh, and two quarterbacks that had never played, um, you know, got the starting nod, and so it was difficult. And, and then the next game was East Carolina, and man, are they good. And it was 28 to nothing before they turned around and uh, they had to play catch up. So they have definitely improved. They've hung in there as a team together, no dissension, anything like that. It seemed like they got a real good attitude. You know, new attitude, fresh, fresh, bright. And so they'll be looking to, to, for this conference team to, to have a good start against us. So they'll be ready. And so will we. Though. We better continue to improve like we have. We're definitely know what the key is. And it's blocking and tackling and being physical. And we can be a physical team when we want to be. And we can be a team that can stretch the field horizontally and vertically. Like we did Saturday night. We stretched that field deep. Those defensive backs had a lot of running. We threw deep a lot. Coach, so we had time. It looks like it may have opened up with what has unfortunately and tragically happened to uh, Case Keenum and, uh, and Houston. He's a, he's a great kid, great person. Of course, that coaching staff is, is uh, good friends of ours. <clears throat> and uh, it's too bad that those two key quarterbacks got hurt. We pretty neat for if. The way it turns out, if he gets 300 yards each game, he could be the passing leader of the conference. You would say that would be great. Um, I didn't realize that until you mentioned it, but um, I didn't really thought about it until you mentioned it. <laughs> That's great. It's awesome. It's, uh, he, we would give a conference championship or a uh, bowl game. You know, that would be first before any of those kind of records, but he deserves any of the Stuff that we're actually we're averaging six yards of carry uh, running the football, right, Jeff? Um, with our running backs who do not include Donald Webber. And that is the highest, that could be the highest average of any running back duo, trio, quadruple group that we have in the history of UTEP football. And that's on, we can rush from 